Welcome to the Sermon Podcast of Treasure House, a branch of Christ Way Ministries International. We are a family of joyful believers on a mission to change the world with the gospel of Jesus through soul winning and soul building. We believe that these teachings will enrich your soul and strengthen your love for God. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to me. Glory to God. If you are not a male, don't get angry with the discourse I want to raise today. I'm aware that women have a lot of problems, challenges that face them in this world. But uh, permit me for a moment to zoom in and focus on the men. Glory to God. First Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 13. Be of good courage. Let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people. See, the attitude that is expected of a father. This is David talking. Two kings are having a conversation in the scripture. But don't look at it from the light of kingdom and kingdom. Look at it from the light of a father talking to another father. Let's read that scripture again. Everybody want to go? Be of what? Good courage. And let us what? Behave ourselves. How? For what? What does that mean? In other words, man up. If a man is beside you, tap them and say, man up. <laughs> if one is not beside you, look at your front or your back, tap somebody and say, man up. Something must have created a problem here because actually they were besieged. And he was talking to the other king how they can help each other. So he says, if they attack you, they am coming there to assist. If they attack me here, I'm coming, you will come to help me. So look at it from that father's perspective that has to face so many things. Let me take my parable a little before we enter into this from what. Minister Abiodun taught us on, on Thursday. Glory to God. Please help me appreciate Minister Abiodun. The challenges of a man. I know that there is a word in the hospital called gynecological word. Is that correct? And there is no such word for a man. That there, even though that challenge is peculiar to women, shows you that even preferences are given to women than men. The society that we live in disfavors a man. It's a society that is designed to crush him if he's not strong. It's automatically designed like that. If two people are in a place, a male and a female, and everybody shouts, thief, thief, and you enter and you see a man and a woman, who is the first suspect? <laughs> By default, he will have received seven slaps before they discover that the phone is with the girl. If that girl now shout and say, that's the thief, that's the thief, <laughs> probably will be dead before they discover that it was not the person. There was nothing he's going to say. Or there's nothing he's going to say. It's, it's, it's the society. If the two of them are vying for a job in this 21st century, there is this softness that the female gender will enjoy that he does not stand a chance. If a female enters an office and if a male enters an office, the same behavior, they may receive different treatments. In other words, the way the lecturer may shout at the guy <laughs> may be different from the way the lecturer will shout at the girl. He said something. He said, let us behave ourselves brilliantly. There's a lot inside it. In other words, if we are going to die, no problem here, but we are dying once. He said that the mortality rate of a man is shorter than that of a woman. And that goes to showing the statistics of the number of our fathers that have died compared to the number of our mothers 
that have died. That man is going to spend his entire life raising a family that may not even belong to him. Who has understood what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not in treasure house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not in treasure house. They think that the man is the master of trickery. But we all know that that's not true. We all know that's not true. That there's another gender. Permit me to talk like this. Can I, can I talk? Oh. Yes, so, Jesus. <laughs> but I tell you. It's true. That man is living his life away for children that don't belong to him. I came across a short, it's like piece of news on YouTube about a Nigerian footballer, very popular. You see, the day he went to audition with Manchester City, I'm sure he was excited. Wow, one of the best clubs in the world. Three weeks ago, he discovered that all his three children are not his children. Don't be too quick to say they are worldly. You will be surprised that many of them, if they ask, what is your religion? What are they going to put there? Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. The woes of a man who has spent his entire life raising a family, say, let us be strong for our people and our city. And at the end of the day, the people that he has stood up for will abandon him. The wife will go to America with the children. And that father is going to languish in that home because of the weaknesses that he projected when they were younger in the name that they were enduring all the challenges that he gave them. But still, he was the one that raised the entire family. And he will be the one to bear the brunt at the end of the day. My beloved sister shared something with me two days ago which almost broke my heart. I needed to remove it from my heart. How one of our fathers in our family died recently and was buried. And I was asking about how the burial went and said the wife was not there. I was surprised because when I was young, it's like, you know, like close to my parents kind of arrangement like that. So I was surprised that what happened? Then she told me that the wife had left the husband like eight months to one year before he died. How can people be in their sisters when all is said and done? And it's a, tr- it's a trick that women just tap a sister beside you and say, come on, come on, don't be like, you are not be like that. We impute righteousness to you. It means that the wife waited for all the children to be fine. She took the title deed of the property they had, the house, the land, and all the things they had, and disappeared. The man died of stroke and the wife was not in attendance to even grace or honor him in death. (laughs) Tap your neighbor and say, that is not my portion. I know the man very well like the back of my hand because it's like we are living on the streets. They were living on another street. We went to their house. So it's not, that one is not the Nigerian footballer story that is far away. This one is the one I witnessed. I was in their home. I didn't see that that number of years ago. Praise the Lord. Men are left to language. And, and there's even something about the man. He can't even talk. For, for a man to speak up to you, that thing, Know that he's saying one out of ten. It's, it's a natural wiring. Who, has, who is understanding what I'm saying this morning? It, it, it's, it's not, the other gender we think is proud. And they will receive castigation for that again. He already has challenges. He needs encouragement. And he has more nagging on top of the child. And if he reacts, the society will say he's, he's a bad person. Is the father of the house. The wife is designed to be a helper. But the structure of 21st century is such that he has to take care of the wife and he has to take care of the what? Can we read, please? Can can, can we read one more time? (laughs) Everybody else would want to go. 
tap tap your brother you say I say <laughs> tap your brother you say that be of good glory <laughs> your children are your children glory to God <laughs> fear not <laughs> your children are your children your wife will be with you even when you are old glory to God say a loud amen to that so we don't talk about this basically we don't talk about it enough. An average girl right now, let me say a little more. There's a lot to say. He's being raised to be independent. Are you aware? The 21st century girl. Because of the abuse over the centuries. So now we came up with the girl child empowerment. Girl child. What? What? Girl child what? Which is not, don't get me wrong, it's very good. But the problem is now. She's now independent, and there are now two men inside the what? Inside the house. <laughs> and it's okay if there are two men inside the house, but if things still go wrong inside the house, the person that will still bear everything. <laughs> so whatever is going on, he has to keep quiet. And he's dying daily. He dies for 50 years. He dies for 30 years. He's not gifted with speaking power. Such that if he tongue lashes you, do you understand? But the other party is extremely gifted by default. <laughs> and Proverbs says that it's better not to live with a contentious woman. It says, go and stay on the rooftop. It's easier for the female partner to go and report to an authority figure than for the male figure to go and report it. Who has understood what I said this morning? Who has concern for the male gender this morning? <laughs> Tap somebody and say, be strong. If you are that person, you are the one I've come to. And our message is simple. Be a man of what? Because let's, let's face it. In spite of all these things, as Brother Matthew has said, you must still succeed. None of the things I've said jeopardizes the fact that you must still succeed. There are many more we have not mentioned. But the strength inside you is still super sufficient to overcome everything and many more. Find the person and say you can't. Some people are breathing seriously right now. <laughs> Find the brother and say you can't. Yeah. I came to encourage you. You see, I came to tell you that what you go through will understand. Find another brother and tell them you can't. Yeah. Two more people, find them and say you can't. Yeah. Did you find two people? Yeah. Find two people and preach it to them. You can't. Yeah. Hard Nigerian problem on top of what you have said. <laughs> If you are online, out of the country, God bless you. Can we appreciate all of them out of the country? You, you may not understand that, 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 that part. Glory to God. But the point is, in spite of all these things, you may be amazed to know that God has ordained the man to be the leader. It's God's ordination. Something inside him has the ability, despite his weaknesses and challenges, to overcome every time. There's not one person that God has used in the Bible that did not have a fault. The society will amplify that fault. You are the one to shut your eyes to those faults and amplify your what? Your strength. Your father may amplify your faults. Your mo I'm talking to the men. Can I talk to the men? Yes, Should we excuse all our women? Glory to God. <laughs> are, women, are you listening to what we are talking about? Eh? Everybody, they may amplify your faults. But God saw the fault there when he still chose you. Yeah. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. He saw the fault there when he still chose you. So if everybody around you amplifies your fault and the only thing they keep drumming in your ear, and that's also a lesson to our women. Glory to God. Say good things now. Glory to God. But you amplify your what? Strength. And the lesson that we are giving here, I'm not going to detail detour from it. I've detoured from it enough. I'm going back to the script. Portrait of a man of valor. This man that is asked to be of good courage because there's something to be afraid of indeed. If that family crashes, it's on him. It's on him. It's the one that the entire world, in fact, the in-laws, go help you to have good in-laws. <laughs> God have you done to our daughter. Glory to God. But you still have to be of good courage and behave yourself. It is not an occasion to behave yourself rudely or out of sync. It's not time to go drinking because that's not what men do. That is the time that he goes out to go drink. That is the time he goes out to go womanize. That is the time he goes out to hang with friends and come home at 11 o'clock. Tap somebody and say, that's not the way. Allow me to slow down. See, I'm not teaching righteousness of God in Christ Jesus today. It's practical. It's super practical. Find them and say smoking is not the solution. Drinking is not the solution. Womanizing is not the solution. Because I'm aware men do those things to, to, to escape, escape men, escapist mechanism. And the one that does not do those things is the one that pines away inside the house and rots away until he develops prostate cancer, develops, name it. Number one, portrait of a man that is regarded as a man of valor. Number one, is visionary. A man of valor is visionary. See, what will keep you is that vision. Vision is, were you here last week Sunday? What kept Jesus in the midst of that crucifixion process was that he set his eyes on the goals. So he was able to defy the shame and endure all the challenges that came with it. Vision is the power that God has given to man to rise above all challenges that he has. So when you see a man that is wandering and is without a vision, that's a man that is lost. That's a man that cannot last. Find somebody beside you and ask them, what is your vision? A man, not a woman. Okay, a woman too should I, because sometimes a woman now needs to become the man. Do I need to enter into that one? When you've married the wrong person that is not, so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But vision is super key. The greatest prophet in the Bible is John the Baptist. And the reason is because he had the perfect understanding of the vision of Christ better than every other person. Nobody saw Christ the way John the Baptist. He didn't perform any miracle. But he said of the, all the people that were raised that were children of the sons of men, he said the greatest is John the Baptist. Because of the message, because of the vision that he had. What will keep you is your vision. God sent Abraham to a certain place called Canaan. Do you know what Canaan was? If you check two, verse, two chapters before that, somebody had placed a curse on Canaan. The curse that was placed on Canaan was by a powerful man known as Noah. The third child came and was mocking him, and he said that things were not going to go well with him. A curse was directly placed upon him. And that's the father of Canaan. That was where God sent Abraham to. The place of case. And he said, go and start your journey from that place. Go and start your life journey from that place that is seemingly most difficult. Just like Jesus Christ. Where did Jesus start his journey? From the manger. He was born in the manger. So that you are in this town or anywhere you are all over the world, that place is necessarily not the wrong place. 
You are in a marriage and you are thinking that that marriage is a cursed marriage. You are in a family or in a town. You think, no, 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 no. God told him to go there. That was why when he gave Lot the opportunity, he said, choose where you want to go. What do you think Lot, Lot did? <laughs> Lot said that, I've chosen Sodom and Gomorrah. Because Canaan was a cursed land. And that was exactly where he stayed. And from there, God told him, lift up your eyes. Can you go there? Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. He said, lift up your eyes as far as your eyes. What was he saying? You may be inside that place that looks like it's not it. Never let anything affect your words, your vision. A man that has lost his vision is a man that is hopeless. A man that has lost his vision is a man without strength. It's exactly what they did to Samson. He was a man of strength, but they took his words. They took his sides. Find somebody and preach it to them. In all you do, never lose your vision. Especially if you are a man. Please let me preach it to them very well. Because I cannot explain all the challenges again. This is what will keep you. It is not running to the wife. It's not running to the family. It is keeping that vision before you. A man that has a vision will wake up every morning despite what is pulling him down. A man that has a vision, even though the body is tired and he feels I cannot go again, something will still make because the vision is driving him. Let's go there. That's Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It's a powerful scripture that I read to us last week. Vision. 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 A man that has started a business and it's like everything just collapsed. Like all the chicken just died. What is going to keep him going? What is going to sustain him? It's the vision that I see a better tomorrow. He says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That means there was a vision that Abraham had. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Have you read Genesis chapter 13 verse 14? Let's read. Everybody, let's read. Want to go? And the Lord, I, I notice I'm not reading scripture, so let me, let me slow down to read scripture a little. Glory to God. Let's read. Want to go? And the Lord said unto Abraham, keep going. After that, Lord was separated from him. What, you see, somebody very left. Even there was one that occasioned it. He could have said, so it could be easy for this boy to go like that. <laughs> this boy that I've heard with me and has been with me all the while. He said, lift up your eyes. And look from the place. He was in Canaan. He was sent to Canaan. He said, from this place, you are taking over the world. From this location, if you keep your sight, you are taking over the world. I cannot emphasize it enough. Keep your what? Keep your what? Do you have a vision? What is the vision of the family that you have? When everybody has given down on the future of your family, have you also given up? I mean, given up. Have you also given up on it? You give up when you lose the vision. Just like a student that cannot envisage or envision himself graduating, that person has what? Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. What's number one? Vision. Number two. Portrait of a man of value. This one is a command. Just like the first one. Be loving. A man of valor, despite all the possibilities I've mentioned, remains what? What do you do in that situation that I cited the other time that you discovered that all the children are not yours? What do you do? What's your counsel? Suppose that was one of the questions that we took this morning. <laughs> what, what would be your counsel? What's the best counsel? Should I tell you? Raise those children like yours. So some of you lifted your nose. And they were saying, well, right, yeah. <laughs> Immediately I said, Raise, you, 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 you turned away. But I tell you, that is the best counsel. And you know the funny thing? Those children are actually yours. 
must understood what I just said now. May the Lord give you understanding. I'm not saying you should be in that situation. I'm just saying in all you do, a man of valor remains loving. Let us behave ourselves valiantly. For our what? For our what? That is a man that loves. No matter what comes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my part. Whether they understand me or not, I'm going to do my part. Number three. Ensure you are resourceful. Number four. Be responsible. What's number one? Be a man of vision. What's number two? Be loving. Please tap your neighbor and say, be loving. Be Be a loving husband. Be a loving wife. I mean, be a loving father. In all you do. That's your nature. The love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy. That's your nature. Even when you correct and the correction seems not to be taken, continue to be loving. It's not occasion to seek to punish. It's not to seek occasion to abandon your duties. Number three, be resourceful. That means consistently you are looking for way hard. Let us behave valiantly. Not that I don't want that question in your What do I do about you? A man of valiance continues to look for what other opportunities, what other options are there. They never throw in the towel. Praise the Lord. And number four, I said be what? Who's a responsible man? A responsible man is a person that takes the blame. That's a summary. (laughs) Does that make sense? A person that takes the blame is a responsible person. If there are issues, who takes the blame? That is the responsible person in that situation. Every single time when there's a fight, when there's a challenge, who takes the blame? That's the responsible person. Find the man beside you and say, be responsible. That's what I'm asking you to do. That means if there's no food in that house, be responsible. If the child falls down, be responsible. Anything that happens, be what? Pastor, you are asking me to die. Well, that's what you signed up for. That's what you signed up for. You think you signed up for sex. I'm sorry to disappoint you. You signed off your life. He said, love your wife just as Christ loves the what? What did Christ do? What did Christ do? In other words, don't even expect thank you for anything you do. Don't expect... It's a loaded thing, but there's no time. I want to unpack something in the next five minutes. I hope five minutes will be enough. Because how do you do all these things? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30. How are you going to do this? It's a, it's a tall ask. It's a tall ask in this society. All what I've said. If I've understood a fraction of it, it's a tall ask. Can we read? Said, even the what? Shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall what? You are not like the men of the world. Your strength is in prayer. Hey! Can I get your attention? Your strength is in prayer. A pastor that does not pray will not last in what? A husband that does not pray will wake up one morning, he has packed his bag. Let's go. 
he will abandon his duties because by strength of man, nobody can prevail. Nobody can. What I've said, if you understood it, it cannot be done by the arm of That's why you can't marry a natural man. He doesn't have the equipment to survive it. He says it's nice, it's caring. Oh, watch. Oh, watch. Oh, watch. They that wait upon the Lord. Give me, give me Ephesians chapter 6. Give me Ephesians chapter 6. Give me Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Glory to God. Oh, money cannot do it. Have you seen people with money and the wife is sleeping with the gate, with the gate man? Are you playing? Is it money? You think they are Muslims? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we read Ephesians chapter 6? Everybody. Verse 10. That word finally means henceforth. Limpion. Limpion is the word. It, it, it means henceforth. It's not like let's conclude. No. It's in, in fact, another meaning is for the future. If you go and check, it's, it's there for the future. Because I'm not going to be with you. This is the last thing I'm writing. So for the future, not what I want to say now. For your life, not what I want to say now. Henceforth, this is what I want you to do. Henceforth, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power which is being strong in the power of his might. In other words, even your strength is not coming from heaven. He's saying that if you are born again, your strength is inside you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If you are born again and the Holy Ghost, that's why in chapter 3, he says that you are strengthened with might by spirit where? Right now, your strength comes from inside you. So he says, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That means you need to engage the power that God has given you inside. And the only way you can bring it forth is by prayer. Mandosh, Liko, a husband that is not praying will falter at a point. A husband that is not praying will run out of gas at a point. A fiance that is not praying will run out of gas. And say, I don't know what to do again. Help me tap a person beside you and say, Pray. Find the man, find the man, find the man and preach it to them. Pray. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. The next verse says, Put on. Put on from where? Put on from where? From inside. Take from within and put upon. Take from inside and put upon and it on the strength of prayer. Can you pray for one second? Let us pray for one second. Mashante lekotas kila baadish, liko barada baradish, meno koka barada ba sendosh, jeme mene kota baradish, rene kontesh. I'm strengthened. I'm strengthened. Man ne reke toskuria baradish. Ene mendo sokto brava ne ria gabara de bazendosh. Jeme mene mene mene. Hallelujah. 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 It says if you are tired, it says if you are disappointed, you are anxious, any of these challenges are the man. He said, What you need to do is to take from within and put up. If you feel that your own prayer is not going enough, then find a brother on the pro. Can you pray with me for 30 minutes? I feel like I don't have the strength to go on again. I feel like my energy has run out. I need more energy now. Then you call somebody and 30 minutes after he said, I feel better now. Thank you. And then you look. That's the way. Lift up your hand. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Our strength is, is inside. And we draw it out. A person that fails to pray is the one that is running out of steam. Masekoteria, Memoro Soto Brava de Liabarad, Yama Menekotas, Rande Le Cocoto Suria Baradish, Elendo Sotas, Rama Manekotos Kurich, Into Yama Manali, every man is strengthened. Masele Cotoria Baradish, Yabele Coteskiria, Hallelujah. Let's read again. Please hold somebody beside you. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Man Sunday. There are women in our midst that are acting as the men because that certain things have happened. 
Okay? Okay, it doesn't matter. Please hold somebody beside you. Can we pray together again in the name of Jesus? Our men are strengthened. Our men are strengthened. We take from inside. We put upon. We take from inside. We put upon. We take from inside. We put upon. There is more. We can keep going. We can keep going. We can keep going. We can keep going. Ramama Santa Labaya. There is strength for a man. There is strength for a man. There is strength for a man. There is strength for every family. Ramamana Sando. Erande Mekotosku. Rabadamana Mash. Salamane Kokaparadich. Erande Mekote Jemenenich. Yakota Parades. There is strength inside. There is strength inside. We take from inside. We put upon. We take from inside. We put upon. Mandarabayish. Masanamash. Ranamash. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Pray for a brother. Pray for a man. Masanarabaya. Hallelujah. One more time we are going to pray. David got to that point in first Samuel chapter 30. He came back and they are taking the wife, they have taken the children. Everything was taken. Took everything. And his own people that they went together, they turned against him. You can come to that point as a man when everybody now turns against you. He said, and David encouraged himself in the law. But there is no wife to encourage you. There's no child to encourage you. He said, and David encouraged himself. It, 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 it's what we have. Learned. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. You may be the wife that is the husband now. You encourage yourself in the Lord. And the way that encouragement comes is from inside. Can we try it one more time? 30 seconds. Hold somebody's hand. Somebody needs to be encouraged this morning. They have zeal to continue. They have power to continue. They have strength to continue. They have grace to continue. They have strength to continue. You are serving a family. You are serving a family. You are serving a family. If you are a wife, you can pray for your husband. Ranama Sandwich. We are strengthened. Every man is strengthened. Every family is strengthened. That man got to a point that his son checked him out of the house. It's not the first time that a child will turn against the father. Absalom checked him out. He was on the streets. This is a man that has understood the strength that comes from inside. They don't look. They have understood it. I'm encouraging a man this morning. That's what I'm doing. And if you are the wife that is the husband of the family, I'm encouraging you this morning. You must understand this principle because it's not an occasion to go down. It's not an occasion to go down. Can we pray for the men one more time? That they are encouraged. There is strength for the man. There is strength for that 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 man. Can we be loving this morning? Can we be loving this morning? This is how. Wait, wait. Every man, please hold your stomach. Please hold your stomach. 
He said, if you faint on the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint on the day of adversity, it's because your strength is small. And this strength comes from inside. This hold your stomach wherever you are. If you're a sister, you can still hold hand. But if I brother, please hold your stomach. That you are strengthened. That you are strengthened. That you are strengthened. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lift your two hands and give him to Thank We strengthen the hands of the weep people once among us. If there are brothers, there are fathers, whether they are in their houses money, wherever they are and they feel down, we declare the name of Jesus that the strength of the Lord is made available unto them. It's made available unto them. It's made available unto them. It's made available unto them. You are strengthened with my. You are strengthened with my. You are strengthened with my. In the name of Jesus, you will not be tired. You will not be discouraged. Hold on. Hold on. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He's with you in that situation. He's with you. It's your strength. It's your strength. It's your strength. It's your defender. He supplies your strength. He supplies your strength. You have the energy to go on. If David made it, you can make it. You can make it. Give him thanks and give him praise. Give him thanks and give him praise. We trust you had a good time with God's word. To enjoy more of this, follow us on our Twitter and Instagram handles at underscore Treasure Church and on YouTube at Treasure House Christway Church. God bless you.